Howdy folks, I'm back, and I'm feeling like a million percent, which is uh, better than a hundred percent, if my math is correct. Yes, indeed, it is correct, and I am correctly called Effing Controller. We are playing Silent Hunter 3, uh, and that is the result of a, a long uh, process of uh, deliberation, uh, careful consideration, the weighing of options, the, uh, the, the, the evaluation of alternatives, uh, in, in the wake of my whiny <laughs> therapy video, which wasn't really a therapy video, I'm fine. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, see how people felt about the Silent Hunter 4 series, and at the very least, everybody was saying, you need to change it. Um, very few people were saying, no, keep on going, which, you know, I respect and understand, but I didn't want to keep on going the way things were. And based on your feedback, um, it actually, uh, turned out that most people wanted me to continue in Silent Hunter 4. Well, not most, um the more popular option by a, a, a very slim margin was to continue in Silent Hunter 4 but possibly with Trigger Maru which is actually exactly what I tried to do however Trigger Maru um, was presenting me with a few problems the chief among them and the one that kind of kind of shat the bed for me was that um, my crew wasn't so much telling me about contacts which is a little bit of a problem so um, that's actually part of the reason why I haven't been posting uh, videos lately, is I've been trying to get Trigger Maru to cooperate, to get it to do what I want it to do, because I really don't want to just let uh, Silent Hunter 4 fall by the wayside. But it, it looks like that's going to have to be the way it is, um, just because I don't want to keep struggling with getting it to work. So, um, I'm done with that. I'm... <laughs> I'm done with trying to get Silent Hunter 4 to cooperate, it's just not working out. We've gone our separate ways, and we're just, uh, you know, we're gonna maybe meet up again in the future, but for the time being, I'm, I'm gonna be playing a game that, um, to be honest with you, is just better. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people will agree with me there. Graphically, maybe not, but every in every other regard, for me personally, I think it's pretty much better. Uh, and the more important thing, too, is that with this mod set, I know it will work a lot better. That's really the key. So. Uh, we're leaving. Uh, we're leaving Ken Masters behind. We'll just uh, we'll say that he, I don't know, he's down in Australia eating eucalyptus, or um, <laughs> maybe he's being re being uh, been reassigned, or he's doing like a, a war bond tour, or um, <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe he's touring the world uh, in a street fighting tournament of some kind. Who knows? But um, in any case, our new captain, of course, is German. And his name is Randolph Poffo. Who's going to sea, cause sea's the place to be. He's too hot to handle, too cold to hold. The tower of power, too sweet to be sour. Funky like a monkey. So yeah, we're gonna drop the big elbow on the allies. Ooh, yeah! It's Randy Savage's real name. That's, that's why... That's, that's the joke. Okay! Moving on uh, to, to probably the, the big deal with this uh, video, I guess, the series. Uh, the big deal right here is uh, U-1204. We are going to be sailing in a Type 21 U-boat. As you can see, a very sleek, modern design. This is a revolutionary design that the Germans came up with during World War II, and it served kind of as the template for decades worth of submarine designs. You can see the conning tower is very similar to some of the designs that the Russians... Actually, the Russians straight up stole this design, if I remember correctly. But then they also used this on, I think, the Alpha class, maybe? I can't remember. I cannot... You know what? I would be... I would be a terrible real-life sub-commander. We already know this. But, you know, this kind of per profile here was very popular with the uh, submarines for a while. You can also see that it's just... It's very hydrodynamic looking. It's very... Very uh, sleek. Very smelt. Uh, very sexy, even. I'll go ahead and say sexy, um, and everyone will be uncomfortable. Uh, I've got my crew basically loaded out. The trick is that I'm gonna have to rename them um, in a little bit. I'm gonna go to go to C, and then because C's the place to be, and I'm gonna rename them through uh, Silent Hunter Three Commander, which is a much easier way of renaming them uh, as opposed to what I was using before. So we've got all these funky German names: Hugo Zimmermann. Hans Erstfeld. I don't know how to speak German, so I'm just insulting people, probably. Um, let's actually look at some of the traits of our U-boat. Um, no deck gun. Very important to note. No deck gun. 
Nun gun. We have two flat guns right here and right here. They're actually kind of built into the the uh, metal of the conning tower. It's kind of cool. A little bit of shelter there. Um, but other than that, we have some interesting torpedoes. We've got the Type 3 fat torpedo. <laughs> We've got some fat torpedoes on this uh, submarine of ours. This actually is pretty cool. What it will do uh, is that it, it once it goes past a certain point that you determine when you shoot it, it'll be like, oh, fuck, I missed. I better go like this a bunch and try to hit something. Uh, sometimes it's not reliable. I haven't used these too much, but um, they should be fun. Otherwise, we have Type 3s, I think these are. And these, as it notes here, these are the uh, electric torpedoes that... Um, fixed the impact or the, the magnetic pistol problem that was uh, common in the early part of the war. And then we also have Type Fives. We have TVs. Um, and we're going to sit in front of them and just look at them and marvel at them and uh, fall in love with them, maybe. No, these actually uh, do passive homing, as it says here. They listen, and they'll listen and be like, oh, that's the loudest thing around. I'm going to chase it. And so it'll it'll hunt down Gilbert Gottfried and explode. No, it, it will basically look for a, a loud propeller, and then it will explode. And, you know, maybe it'll just hit the propeller. If you hit the propeller, though, you can go at it with normal torpedoes. So that's kind of neat. I don't know how much I'm going to use these, but we've got them. Uh, they're actually fairly far back in the queue. I think, how many torpedoes is this? 6, 12, 18... 23. We have 23 torpedoes, which is actually quite a bit. No stern tube, unfortunately, but that will be okay. We'll be alright. Um, we have a snorkel. I think that we do. We already have it! Fabulous! We have a snorkel, which is exactly what it sounds like, except um, rather than allowing us to breathe, uh, us individually to breathe, it allows the sub to breathe. It allows it to expel exhaust through the diesel engines, as you can see here. Allows the U-boats to run their air-breathing diesel engines for propulsion and to recharge their batteries while running underwater. Very, very, very important. Very key feature. This is actually um, passive radar. This is uh, looking for radar signals, I guess. We had that on our Silent Hunter 4 sub, so you should be all very well acquainted with this. We have active radar as well. We have the Holtenveil Drauf. <laughs> Whatever. And then we've got some... Hydrophones, we've got batteries, and we've got, um, is, what's this? Is this the hydrophone? Oh, this is batteries, hydrophones, this is active sonar. Um, and then we also have decoys here. So hopefully we won't use those, or won't have a need to use those. We probably will end up having to, though. What's this? The engine. We have an engine. <laughs> it's important, I guess. All right. So with all that bullshit out of the way, it's April 1st. How fitting. Let's uh, get going here. We're in um, Flotilla 11 which is up in Bergen, which is right about here where my mouse is. So um, we're probably going to be assigned BF-27. Well, that's actually off the coast of Brittany, if I'm not mistaken. It's over here. It's in the Bay of Biscay at the very least. So we'll uh, go to BF-27 and try not to die. Let's also look very quickly at our sundry uh, difficulty settings. <clears throat> man, that Macho Man Randy Savage impression really took it out of me. <laughs> We've got uh, no event camera unchecked and no external view unchecked. So we have event camera and we have external view. That's pretty much part for the course. You guys know that that's what you can usually expect from me. And then uh, we have map contact updates enabled. So you'll be able to see the little lines on the map. And I will too, which is important. Okay. I think we're good to go. Um, we're going to set sail from Bergen. And I'll see you guys on the other side of the loading screen. All right, folks, welcome aboard the U-1204. <laughs> I can't even remember. Yes, it is the U-1204. All right, so we, here we are. I think we're in a sub pen. Let's actually verify that. There we are. We are in a sub pen. And look, my men are in a men pen. <laughs> They're in little cubby holes. Very, very cozy. And I'm getting familiar with this guy, whoever he is. I have not renamed the crew yet, but I will do that shortly. But I just wanted to get underway here get out of the pen and there we go onward so this sub is actually designed to primarily operate underwater but of course we're in shallow harbor waters here so we're not gonna go on and dive just yet but here we are in Bergen beautiful Bergen all right well I think I've kind of explained all of the different features of our submarine so I think I will start plotting a course, and I remembered all my buttons, good for me. 
Let's just go this way. Let's follow the escort here, I guess. Um, which way do we go through? Does it matter? I'm gonna go this way. This looks like a fun scenic route. Through the Norwegian fjords. Alright. Here we go. And then we'll go around there and then through there. Beautiful, beautiful. Now BF27 is over here. I was right, it is off the coast of Brittany. Oh my. <sighs> I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit concerned about the situation with that, but not much we can do other than just try our very best. We could actually go through this slot here. Let's try that. It's probably a bad idea, but all right. There we go. And BF27 is over here. Maybe we'll um, kind of go around like this off this shelf here, and then there we go. <laughs> All right. A little bit roundabout, but the channel, bad idea. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's only April 1st, 1944, as opposed to June 1944, but we still don't want to have any part of that. Um, let's look at the map here. The Russians have uh, taken back uh, Leningrad. Or, well, they never... You know what I mean. They're, Leningrad is still in Russian hands. <laughs> um, everything's... Uh, Starting to come apart for the Germans. Actually, there we go. Italy is starting to fall into Allied hands. There, there's the, there's the sign that things are changing. Um, but yeah, so far nothing. The fortress isn't absolutely crumbling, but it's starting to come apart. There's some cracks for sure. Um, so yeah, that's our that's our course. We're gonna stick to it. Sail through this way, and I'll keep you guys apprised of any interesting developments. Well, I think that counts as an interesting development. We got radar signals. Oh, they're coming in. That is a bombing raid. That is a bombing raid. Oh, boy. I haven't renamed anybody still. So, you anonymous dudes, Joseph, Joseph Peters and Adolf Molhausen. Um, I think I might need your services. This actually happened um, during one of my streams. I uh, actually streamed this, where are those? Not too long ago, and uh, we had something very similar happen when we left port late in the war. Oh my. So apparently this always happens. <laughs> I would have liked to have hoped that it would be random, but whatever. There you go. Go for it. Where are they? Just, just go. Just, oh god. Yep, there's some shots. What's going on? Our destroyers are opening up. Shooting at some stuff over here. I don't see them. Oh, there they are. Oh, that's a seagull. That's them. Those are not seagulls. Oh, great! Marvelous! This one is coming right for me, I think. Guys, you guys can go ahead and uh, open fire. Oh, that one already dropped its bomb. Oh, God. Guys, go ahead and start shooting. What? Did we get shot at? Where did the bombs fall? What? Oh god. Yeah, we're getting shot at. Jesus Christ. Some fucking tail gunner is getting lucky hits on us. That guy took some damage over there. He doesn't look too good. Come on, guys. I can't tell if those are B-24s or B-25s. It doesn't make a difference. You don't want to usually do something like this. Oh, God. Now oh, they're flying away. It looks like we avoided the bulk of the damage, but let's, uh... Yeah, we took some hull damage. Alright, let's get a, get a repair team going. 
Remember this trick? Okay, you guys can probably cool it. <laughs> Don't think that they're any threat anymore. Okay, that's fine then. And are we repairing? Repair, there you go. Well, alright. Oh, that was quickly dealt with. Good job, guys! Oh! We shot down a plane! Oh! We're about to ram our escort! Get over there! <laughs> oh my god! Get out of the way! <laughs> well, this is a pretty typical start to a Silent Hunter patrol for me. Oh, nearly killing our escort. Fucking something up is generally what happens. I think it must be this plane that's about to go down. What? Oh, that's... What? Did we get... That's a floating dock. That just... Is that what that is? Why are they showing us this? Are we responsible for this somehow? <laughs> they totally sank a floating dock with their bombs. Okay, I know. There's a lot of them. It's... Not concerned about that right now. Um, oh, that's a that's. I guess I'll just go ahead and survey the damage. Why not? That's already like that. I think that that's one of the hulks that's left in the harbor, probably to reflect the fact that this harbor is bombed frequently. Yeah, there's one too. And this guy took a hit. Looks like fantastic. Things are going great for us. Alright, well, let's take a look at our plucky little sub. Oh, I forgot to show you guys the best part. I made this. Stop moving. Slow down so that my... I guess I could tell them to maintain orders in perpetuity, but... Can you guys see that? See how awesome that is? Amazing. <laughs> I'm a moron. Alright, so let's uh, go ahead and return to course. And hope that that doesn't repeat itself. Because I'm not interested in any of that. Are they coming back around? Nope. Oh, they bombed something else here, though. What a bunch of pricks. Well, wait a minute, that's in red. That's a... Hostile boat. What the fuck? Oh, this could be fun. This could be a lot of fun. Go ahead and look at that logo. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Let's uh, put our crew back into their regularly scheduled positions, I guess. And uh, get back to work here. Okay, folks. So here's the deal. I tried to rename everybody, but Silent Hunter 3 Commander apparently doesn't think I have a crew at all. Which is not the case, because I can clearly see little paper dolls and their little paper doll cubby holes, but whatever. Um, so there's crew, but Silent Hunter 3 Commander won't let me rename them, so I went and did it manually, and I think I fucked it up because I added a bunch of names that don't appear in the actual crew that we have here. So I'm thinking that they, the people that don't appear, must be like some of the people that I can hire once I get back to port. I don't know where they went, but they're supposed to relate to actual people, and there's no people. Um, for them in my boat. Does that make any sense? Basically, I named a bunch of people. They're gone. They don't exist on my boat, apparently, uh, after manually renaming them. So, um, sorry about that. If you got removed somehow through the magic of Silent Hunter 3 save file editing, I apologize. If, uh, if, if you're really broken up about it, um, feel free to forward your complaint to me, and I will f just give you a bunch of empty promises about how I'll fix it, because I won't. Um, anyways... <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, if you're off the boat, it's nothing personal. It just is... You you were just the victim of a technological glitch. Mwahahaha. <laughs> How bureaucratic. All right. Here we go. We've got Doc Ba, Ninja Turtle 740, Musing Rabbit, Rear Admiral Rebo. 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 Should ask people how they pronounce their names. This is easy to pronounce. This is Crumble, a delicious uh, fruity dessert. Fezzy. Tengu 190. Also, if you got like promoted or demoted, it means it don't don't take it personal or anything. It just I, I did it basically line by line, and I don't know where 
I was, or I didn't know where I was putting people, so, you know, <laughs> you either got lucky or unlucky. You're either lucky to be on here and uh, promoted, you're unlucky to be off of the boat entirely, you know, it's just, it's just a crapshoot. Anyways, uh, Sieve82, choosing it, choosing to pronounce it that way, it's like Steve without a T. Uh, Redcoat, Junker O Rammer, Happy Hands. Ben Clothier, X Twister 271, Veronius, Cameron Richards, Mr. Entropy, Krilla Childs, Zena, Zena, 1337, Mr. White Dragon 8, Man Band 20, Tess Tickle, Shenanigan Flanagan, Samite, JT Lost, Mr. Dix 420, Hitman 911 9462378544 Pi, Hans Cosmo, John Nightmare Fuel, Handsome, be wonderful, old dude, dude do. <laughs> that wasn't intentional, but I like how that worked out. Uh, Mr. Crunk, who was actually supposed to be on my crew before, but I noticed in my little list that I keep that I, I don't remember his name appearing. So welcome aboard, Mr. Crunk. Uh, Kenneth Noisewater, who is a new crewman, welcome to you, sir. Um, welcome to the Octagon. Hagen Mathis, Rooster Dentures, Mr. Crazy Man, Vanilla Butter Monkey. Clever Kilvania, Groove Clubhouse, Kleine Kleine Kathofer, Dicks in Balls, Hensa, Juicy Rump, Two Gamers, 57, Lost Lancaster, Mechanized Fantasy, Hot Race Car, 1, 2, 3, Ricola, Trunk Monkey, and finally Delonian. And again, I know that there are people missing from my Silent Hunter 4 career, but not anything I can really do about it because I tried my best. I did my best, you guys. Just give me some credit, all right? So here we are. We're on the surface. We're um, very, very, in very, very deep water right now. Getting thoroughly undersea. And I want to talk a little bit about the, the overall functionality of this here handsome uh, Type 21 U-boat. So it's really designed, as I was saying, to be operated underwater. So let's go ahead and go underwater quickly. There we go. I think we actually in this boat can go a little bit deeper so once we're at depth that's pretty dark probably can't see any of that shit just take my word for it we're at depth now we're going nine knots at a head uh, one third so that's pretty cool uh, but the problem is of course you'll be chewing through battery power operating underwater so the way that you um, can recharge your u-boat and I think I might have to go a little bit uh, shallower in weather like this. Let's go ahead and do that. Is to use your snorkel. Actually, tell you what, I'll, I'll show you the actual net effect here. Let's 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 just go to this map real quick. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! What happened there? I'm getting out of there <laughs> right now. All right. So, as you can see, our battery power, oh my god, it's draining. Uh, <laughs> I'm really freaked out right now, that was unacceptable. <laughs> I don't like bugs like that that make people turn into wafer-thin slendermen. But, anyways, it's not going to be one of those Let's Plays. No, no fake scares, no jump scares, anything like that. Anyways, so we're now at 14 meters. Um, we have a little bit of drain on our battery power, so what you can do... Is you can slow it down and you can extend your schnorkel. There we go. I remembered the buttons. And so you have to go to a head slow in order to use this thing, but there it is. There's our schnorkel. And so what this does is it takes in air so that our and it also exhausts air so that our diesels can operate, which is really fantastic. A couple of downsides with this. First of all, uh, as I've noted, you can only go at a head one third, I believe. Yeah, Let's try ahead and try and go ahead to go ahead one third. Oh, we seem to be able to. I don't think it'll let us for long. There you go. See, it automatically dropped us down to a head one third. So there's that. Um, or head slow. <laughs> and the other issue is that this is obviously a pretty. You know, this is a pretty major protrusion from the water. So it's not only visible from the air, it's visible, it, you know, because it leaves a wake. It's also visible on radar, I believe, um, at this point in the war. So you have to be very, very prudent about how you use this thing. Um, the other downside, and I don't know how well this is replicated in the game, 
I think it will just simply stop recharging your battery actually. If it gets washed over it doesn't work obviously because it needs to take in air in order to operate the diesels. If the diesels don't have any air then they won't work. Um, one of the downsides of this in real life was that when this would get washed over it would close a valve to keep it from getting uh, water in the system and when that valve when that would close um, the sometimes the diesels wouldn't shut off so they would keep on sucking in air and sometimes that air would actually come from the cabin of the u-boat and um, it wasn't like people would suffocate necessarily I don't know if that happened or not but what would often happen is it would decrease the air pressure in the cabin really quickly and that would cause people's eardrums to blow out which sounds just absolutely wonderful um, but I don't think the game uh, replicates that effect so this is actually still pretty cool though, all that said, because let's go ahead and go back to the old uh, the old map here so that we can speed up time. No, keep the snorkel up. And we'll just kind of go up to 256 and you can see very, very slowly but surely we are recharging while underwater. That's the big thing. So you can stay underwater almost indefinitely in this uh, in this here submarine. Now, um, as I said, it does have its downsides. You don't want to be using the snorkel during the day, particularly, because planes especially... Well, let's actually look at the map. I'll show you guys why that's a hazard now. Um, we're in 1944. Allied air coverage extends to Bergen at this point. So this is all covered. Basically, our whole area of operations is covered by Allied air cover. Um, in varying concentrations I guess obviously the closer we get to Britain the more likely it is that we'll run into planes but this whole area is infested with planes now so we need to be very prudent about our use of the snorkel the snorkel should probably only be used um, during the night and that would include like just before sunrise and during twilight just so that we can get a little bit of a recharge going uh, going into the day and recharging after our use of the engines during the day. The other thing too is that we probably are going to stick to using a head one or a head slow for a big part of the day, which means that we're not going to move as quickly, but we'll have better engine economy uh, that way. We'll be able to stay under for longer, I guess is really what I mean, and uh, be able to stay alive longer as a result. Really staying underwater is really crucial for obvious reasons, I guess. There's a lot of planes, there's a lot of uh, escorts, and if we're going ahead uh, slow anyways, we're pretty quiet, so that helps as well. I think I've kind of explained how that all works. Um, if we do find ourselves in the position to need where we need to recharge on the surface, or well, where we need to recharge during the day, we will recharge fully surfaced because that way we can at least detect planes as they come in via radar. The snorkel itself does not, well, we can't see anything right now. I don't think the snorkel um, as it exists comes with a radar detector. I think in the war they actually did install some very simple radar detection on the tip of the snorkel just so that uh, it would, you know, make a beeping sound or something to <laughs> notify the crew of their impending death. Um, but as it is, it won't tell us um, that there's a plane coming in because our snorkel is creating a huge wake in the water and it sees us and it's going to drop a bunch of shit on us. So I think I've explained all of that. I've introduced everybody. I think I've got everything covered. So we're going to start the patrol proper now. We're going to go ahead and get into the sea and try to hunt and not be hunted.